Please note, we would like to make it very clear, we are totally against the form of discipline described in the articles and accounts being used on minors and non-consenting adults. Although some of these accounts are fictional, and others may be an exaggerated reality, none of them are too far from the truth of what really happened back in those days. Bend over. I'm not sure why someone who is being punished should have to bend over to receive it. I know at my school it was always administered with the culprit bending over the headmaster's desk or a chair. I suppose it would be effective in either position I know it was for me. In the bending over position, it makes the fleshy lower part of the bottom more accessible for strokes of the cane. It generally presents a better target for the purpose of punishment although there is a case when the paddle is used that the recipient should be lying face down thereby presenting the bottom in a more relaxed state and perhaps better equipped to receive swats. Boys always had to bend over in my school. I assume it is to make the bottom an easier target and help to avoid mishits. There may also be something in the idea of a caning being more painful if the skin is stretched but I would have thought that would also be influenced in a greater way by the thickness amount of layers covering the bottom. Surely the main reason for bending over for a school punishment was so that the trousers would tighten against the bottom. In a standing position, there would be an air gap between the trousers and the bottom, which would impede a cane stroke. I think the same argument would apply to a skirt if a girl was to be caned on the bottom although I've never been wholly convinced that a typical school skirt would have been really tight against the lower part of the bottom even in a bending over position. I suppose it depends on the type of skirt, and how far you bend. Also if the knees are bent that would pull the skirt in a bit tighter over the lower part of the backside. Our skirts were supposed to be knee length but, like countless schoolgirls before and after us we would always try to wear them as short as we could get away with, which at my school was not very much before you in trouble. We also were in the habit of altering the skirt to make a tighter fit. This was our own downfall really as if you were to be caned the skirt was always tight in the target area. As for how far we had to bend over we had no choice really. We had to bend over the desk with your hands holding the edge in front of you with your feet as close as possible to the front or, over a chair with hands on the chair's seat. All the canings I received were always effective but as I've said many times never brutal and to be honest where my skirt was at the time was probably the last thing on my mind. Did the teacher make you take your blazer off first? Or simply lift it up out of the way, even though the cane would strike nowhere near the blazer, unless it was way too long? I got caned once at school and I remember the deputy head, the head never dished out canings at my school, lifting my blazer out of the way. The blazer remained on. I don't recall ever having to remove any item of clothing when being caned at school. I can't be absolutely positive but I'm almost sure if my memory serves me correctly that when the headmaster instructed me to bend over his desk I instinctively for some unknown reason lifted my blazer clear of my skirt as I bent over. Why I would do this I'll really have no idea but I'm fairly sure this is what happened. Apart from administering the caning he had awarded me the headmaster never touched my clothing. I remember the head lifted part of my blazer up over my back when I bent over the chair for my caning. No doubt it would have otherwise obscured part of my bottom.